going to be progressing on today. We're going to be getting into what I call the kinetic aspects of, of, of conflict. We're going to be doing the movement. You do have my humblest apologies up front that we're going to be moving all over everywhere physically on the hottest fucking day we've ever had so far. We're going to set records, right? But that's, hey, it's just the way it is. We can't, we can't move it around. We'll start out with the, the classic shooting on the move. It's like Paul House said, it's something everybody wants to do, everybody works on it, and seldom is it used. Because the only good way to shoot on the move is going forward. Trying to shoot on the move going sideways, you go so slow that it's useless. I mean, you can actually do it. You can see the guys in the competitions. They'll, they'll go into a target, and then when they're shooting, they'll be going, yeah. Bah, 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 and then they'll move on. You might as well fucking stop and get a good shot. Running fast, boom, boom, and then move. So, but we'll do it because you want to, and we'll show you how. And I have had one student that actually used it in, 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 a, in a conflict. He was at Christmas time, and he had his car in a parking space up to a wall. And he had just put his kid in the baby seat and was putting packages in, and he looked up like this, and here come a guy at him with a knife. Boy, he had no place to go other than forward, so he went right at the guy, which the guy did not expect. Turned the tide. So I'm, I'm never going to say never. Matter of fact, I, I think you're wise in your life to avoid never and always. Right? Well, I always carry appendix. Bet you don't. Something's going to come along, you're not going to be able to do it. But um, Not at church, you can't if you're wearing a suit. Well, you know, you go, go to a wedding, suddenly, yeah. Hey, would you be my best man and you're wearing a tuxedo yeah. or a suit and stuff like that? Go ahead and carry appendix. See how well that works with the other guests. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what the cummerbund is for? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. So anyway, um, we'll do the shooting on the move just to get you acquainted with it, and then we're going to go to moving and shooting, or shooting and moving, where you move into position, you fire shots, and you go. We'll do that forward. We'll do that backward. We'll do it laterally. Well, how come we don't do it diagonally? That's the same as lateral. Instead of going here, though, you're going there. Give me a break. Um, so we'll be doing that. Um, when we start getting into lateral movement, we're going to be breaking down into four relays. <coughs> the reason for it is, is because you can see how close our targets are. If we want to get any level of lateral movement in, you got to got to go every other target kind of stuff. So that's okay, no big deal. There are skill drills for that, time drills. We'll be doing those. That will slow the progress of the class down too. There's no way around it. You've got to time everybody individually. We'll have relay one on one side. We'll have relay two on the other side. But still, you'll be doing it one at a time. One at a time. It's okay though. Everybody wants to see where they stand. Um, my feeling on drills are I don't do drills just for the sake of the drill. I have been to classes where we do a drill and I'll ask the instructor what was the purpose behind that and they hem haul around and you find out it's just something they like to do or that they're good at. No. S drills should reinforce essential skills. If that drill is not doing something to reinforce a skill that I am passing on to you, then it's just range masturbation. What is it that uh, Pat McNamara calls it? Institutional inbreeding. Institutional inbreeding. Yeah. It's just silliness. It doesn't make any sense. You know, I, I've seen some drills where you'll draw from the holster, fire one round, and go into a reload. Who carries one round in their gun? Well, and this is what I always like, and it just makes me cringe. It reinforces the fundamentals. You could say that about anything. We could come up with the most ludicrous shooting drill ever because you're shooting the gun. It reinforces the fundamentals. Bullshit. If it's not reinforcing a skill that is emphasizing a skill that you need, to function, then it's just silliness. It's just silliness. So just going to go out of the line and say that on video. Okay? So that's where we'll be headed today. How far we'll get, I don't know. <clears throat> How far we'll get, we don't know. Um, that block of instruction ends up in what we call a box drill, where in one timed motion you're going in all the directions. 
and we get to shoot steel targets on that. Uh, I have my life shoot steel targets. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, so that's where we're going to be heading. We, once we finish the kinetic aspects, then we'll move on to the next lessons. But so far, so good. We're making good progress. Okay. Uh, again, sorry, it's going to be a very physical, active day. Make sure you drink water when you're not on the line. Get back here and get in the shade so you can cool off. Uh, we'll go over at lunchtime. We'll turn on the air condition for those that want to, you know, go there for lunch and, and things like that. I'm going to start out today just like we always do: three round fade back from the holster, pow, pow, pow. Then we're going to do some dot drills, and then we're going to do some hand management. Three round fade back. Day three. All those things, okay? Three rounds. <laughs> On the command of up, does everybody need to load and make ready first? Yeah. Go ahead and load and make ready. <laughs> up! upright today. How lovely is that? I'm shooting low again for whatever reason. Yesterday I was dialed in. Uh, this yeah, this is what I got sense. going today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I even managed to hit the freaking upright. Whee! Some days you're on, some days you're not. Won't be a drag race to put it away. Thinking about this. Here we go. First call up and out. Single shot on your dot. Number two. Focus. Hey. Two.
That is proof positive that a crappy night of sleep will cost you accuracy. Oh, no doubt. Man. Focus. Ask all those questions. Second call, three shots. Watch your dot. can't think about what your hands are doing in a gunfight. When, when people um, change their grip, they, you, hit, you go low. Is that You hit low. Is that where they tend to hit when they do it? Or, well, they, or? sometimes they'll go to 7 o'clock, sometimes they'll go to 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock. It just depends. Okay, somewhere low. Every so often you'll have that person that goes up to 9. And what they're doing is they're pressing in with all three of their fingers against the side. Well, what do you think that does to them? You, you can kind of tell what they're doing by looking at it. Okay? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting out with that. And then as we kind of work that, we'll close up your grip. And what we may have you do, just make a grip for me there, Eric. What we may do is either dare or buck your eye. You may, you may feel us come in here and put our finger in here. What do you think we're trying to feel? Squeeze your face. What your, what your pinky finger is doing. Yeah. yeah. We can usually feel it moving, flexing it. So... We can't fix it for you. We can diagnose it, but we can't fix it. We, you know, you're flexing it. And some of you guys have had the experience where I've come up to you and done this, and, and I, to the best of my knowledge, this is my invention, where I actually take your hand. Now, give me some, give me some resistance with your index finger. Working the trigger, working the trigger, working the trigger. What do you feel my lower finger is doing? Pretty much nothing. Okay, no, this is what most people do. Yeah. You know, I can stand there and say it and say it and say it, but when you feel it with your own hands, then it's like, ah, okay. <clears throat> now, the fact that we're on day three and we're doing this, it's kind of discouraging. <laughs> kind of discouraging. But it's okay. The great thing about having five days with you, we can do it. Shit's tough in a two-day class. Yeah, that's right. And in a two-day class, you know, you're doing something like kinetic pistol. You know, you're gonna be, you want to be moving. And you're having to unfuck people on the first half of day one it can get kind of discouraging. And it's like that whole Dunning Kruger effect. Everybody thinks they're better than they are. Oh, I'm not going to take his basic con. I'm going to kinetic because I'm that fucking good. No, you're not. <laughs> but you know, part of running the business. Okay. So that's the direction we're headed. Just bear along with us, and and focus on what your hands are doing. If, if we can just get you to think about what's happening here, we can, we can fix a lot of your problems. But we can't make you think that way. You have to do it. You have to do it. You come up on target, build your grip. Build the proper grip. Then what you'll do is TP your fingers. Okay, TP your fingers. On my command, that is up. Right? My command. Smoothly, slowly press off one round. Don't let those sights disappear. You know, if you're looking at the sights and it, they do something like this, which is do. Yeah. So press it off nice and slow. Recover the recoil. Just wait for the next command. You'll press it off, boom. Recover. Everything else remains the same. Just do it a good the only difference is this. What are we looking for? Well, the most obvious thing is as you press off that shot, your fingers go. What's that tell us? Well, yeah, you real got a real bad convulsive grip. If it moves around a little bit, how much, how much movement here do you think it takes to move that muzzle an eighth of an inch? Not much. So remember what we said an eighth of an inch was at 20 feet? It's a lot. This makes you focus on your hands. So when you're moving the trigger, we shouldn't be seeing anything here, should we? Right?
get it. I get it. Here we go. Back up on target as soon as you reload. Last call, single shot. Last call, single shot. Shoot! Now we're gonna it's interesting, isn't it? It takes the shot. yank out of it. We're going to dose shot. That's cool. I've never done that. Oh. It takes it for me. It takes that out of it. On target. On target. It's gonna be two shots. Really got to keep those fingers together. Don't move those hands. Ready? Two. Lord have mercy, that's a hot gun. You're getting ready to be a Spec Ops Ninja. <laughs> this right here, man. We're, whew, you start doing this shit, you're just gonna, oh man, you're, ah, 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 you're gonna look like fucking chew your inside of your mouth and drink the blood and shit like that. Swat hands. <laughs> what we're talking about is shooting on the move. <laughs> Again, not a bad idea to know how to do it. How practical is it, especially for the armed citizen? Quite frankly, if you're not on some sort of an entry team, it's not something I'd spend a lot of time practicing. If you want to do it every so often just for fun, I do just to fool around with it if I've got extra bullets. That's fine, but it's not something I'd spend a ton of time mastering. But we will show you how to do it. A lot of people don't realize that when they're walking down the street, it's actually a pretty vibration-filled event. You don't notice it because you're looking straight ahead, but all it would require you to do would be to put a pistol here like this and walk, and then you get the opportunity to see how much that gun would move. Keep in mind, we're holding you responsible for hits to that six-inch square. Just because you're moving doesn't mean you get a bigger scoring area. Well. This is more difficult. Shouldn't I get more of the torso? No. So what it requires us to do is to modify the way you walk. So it's not real complicated. Um, where's Mike? Am I getting ready to release anything that's classified by the federal government <laughs> as a secret? See that orange line drawn? Yeah. Walk that line very, very fine. Okay. <laughs> First thing you have to do is you have to kind of turn your legs and hips into a shock absorber. So what we're talking about is now instead of walking fairly rigid with your legs, which is the way you normally would, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to sink. And you're going to be walking kind of a heel ball toe with your knees and hips absorbing the impact for your upper torso, just like that. Does everybody see what I just did? Good old Groucho. I like to call it the super fly flag. <laughs> okay, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be going. Just like that. When, we for, when I first learned this in the early 1980s, we were taught what was called a duck walk. And what we were taught to do, or a groucho walk, we were taught to turn our feet out like this. Well, all that did 
which make you bend your knees. The same thing you do here if you just act as a shock absorber. But that's what you did. You walked like this because it made you deep more of a shock absorber. The problem was it was really hard on your shins. People got tired of doing it really, really fast. So all you got to do is just is just sink right here because what we're trying to do, and I'm going to put the pistol. In, I'm not necessarily putting it at Abner. What I want you to do is I want you to look at how much my lower body is moving versus the muzzle of my pistol. Okay, so you ready? Some movement to it. But, I mean, let's face it, you got to accept the wobble when you're standing perfectly still, don't you? Right? Let me walk more upright, take a look at what it looks like. Ready? So you guys understand the reason for it now. What you're basically doing is you're separating your feet from your hands, which you need to do anytime you shoot while moving. So basically you move from the waist down, you shoot from the waist up. You're kind of like creating a tank turret. So what we'll be doing is we're gonna be starting out with the guns dry. The reason for that is that way if someone gets a little speedier than someone else, um, you, you get ahead of people's muzzle, it's not gonna endanger anybody. Now, why do we go dry? Because some of you people are zippier than others. Some of you will take off like I just did, and some of you will be going. Then we'll have to speed you up. We'll have to slow other people down. But basically, what we want you to do is put your sight in that square and keep it there while we're doing the Here we go, guys. Up on those targets. We're on that chest cavity. Build that good grip. Use those legs as shock absorbers. Up on target, up on target. Here we go. Don't forget, rolling heel, toe. Move. Slow, slow. See if it's bouncing. Did you take a shot? Guys, heads up, while you're working and shooting, okay, the guns sometimes might go down. What we don't want you to do, <laughs> while everybody's moving, okay, you're doing nice and cool and all of a sudden your gun goes and you stop and start messing with it while everybody else is doing. You gotta do that, what you gotta do? Keep going. That's where your safety <laughs> officer comes into play to be able to, you're good at some, keep moving, keep Listen moving. There's no reason for your gun to run on the bullets. And that horse shit about, oh, I wanted to test my reload. You lying sack of shit. You forgot to top off your gun, didn't you? An armed professional knows the status of his gear. Keep that, keep that thing topped off. How many rounds are we gonna fire on this? Don't know. But if you don't think you can make the shot, you shouldn't be pressing the trigger, should you? By the same token, that's not licensed to go So your target looks good. <laughs> Trust me, we'll notice that. Stand by. Ready. Move. Frisky. Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. You're doing good. Ready? Move! Hey guys, it doesn't look pretty. Instructors, quick teaching point. I love that. Sometimes you'll get, because of that bounce of that gun, just like in the academy with the little girls and the limp wrist kind of stuff, you're getting some harmonics, all right, of that gun moving and bouncing, that that slide may be not getting the, the resistance it needs, and you might get a, a, a fail to eject, right? 
So you're thinking, man, there's some strange things going on with this gun. Be very mindful about not letting that gun bounce. Okay, here we go, let's do it again. Not running, but pick it up about a step or two. Boom! this and you let go of a round, I guarantee you, no doubt about it, it won't be some old lady in a wheelchair in an air tank. It'll be some little kid on a tricycle. That's right. So even though what you're doing may be God's work, you've got to protect the people around you. Because the minute you draw your pistol and decide to get involved in whatever this situation is, you just took responsibility for everybody in the battle space, whether you wanted to or not. I had some young guy about this point say, wait a minute, that ain't fair. The bad guy doesn't get held responsible. And I just looked at him and I said, yep, that's why he's the bad guy. <laughs> Let's face it, more and more in our society, bad guys aren't being held responsible for <clears throat> So you take responsibility for everybody in the battle space. Yep, not right, that's the way it is. So when you draw that pistol to get involved in that active shooter situation because you had always been daydreaming <clears throat> to be a hero, take that into account because it's not just you and them. It's you and everyone else. And you see how I said that? You and everyone else. In reality, it's you and everyone else. Because unlike the firing range, where we're only dealing with the 180, in real life it's a 360, which could include up or down, depending on where you're at. So everybody has a line in the sand, I get that. But make it a very, very tall one. Make it a very tall one. So what are we going to be talking about? We talk about muscle diversion. Where we don't want the muscle to be is here. Because if the round discharged, this would be the dangerous area. Could a round discharge here and be okay? I mean, not okay, but it won't hurt anybody, right? Could discharge there. Could it discharge here and maybe? Yeah, you can always get into the argument. Well, you know, if it goes up and you happen to be in the mall and can hit somebody on the third, I get it. You do the best you can. It could be here, hit, go up, hit somebody there too. You, you just try, you do the best you can. So the gun is here or the gun is here. It just can't be here, right? So if you're running, you have to control it. This hand is gonna have to be controlled in some way. This is usually, and if you want to try this, go ahead. This is usually where I get somebody that wants to use Sewell. Right? Because while well, I can hold my hand, try to run with, and not move your arms. Yep. And of all of the people in the world, you don't want to negligently, accidentally, or inadvertently shoot. You are number one. tell you something. If you shoot yourself in the thigh, even if you don't sever that major artery, it's going to make it real hard for you to move. <clears throat> you with me so far? So, suggested positions when we do this. What I do, and I'm not going to point my real gun at you, but I'm here like this, because this is kind of like running, right? All I'll do is I'll turn my hand sideways <clears throat> and my wrist. <clears throat> It's kind of like Sewell, but it's out away from me. The other one is just up next to my head. 
I can still move, but you see the muzzle stays up. So those are the positions I'd use when I'm going forward or I have to turn and go backward. So far so good? Okay, so that's the position we do. Now, when we move, we move quickly. For whatever reason, when we decide we need to stop and shoot, that likely has to be instantaneously, and when we come to a stop, we need to be prepared to get outbound fire. We can't be doing something like this, and I'm just going to use my finger gun, where I come running in, and I decide to stop, so I go... Ain't going to work, is it? If we're trying to come to a stop to take a shot on somebody, we're trying to stay inside their action response loop, do you think something like... Going to telegraph what you're getting ready to do. Oh, he's stopping. Boom. Mm. No, you're going to have to stop as quickly as you can, as suddenly as you can. And when you come to a stop, you're going to need repair <coughs> shoot. I'm not going to say stop and shoot because you may stop and the circumstance changes. You don't need to shoot. <coughs> so there's going to be a millisecond of evaluation, or there should be, before you start launching bullets. Right? So, what is that going to require from you? It's going to require a shift in your center of gravity. <clears throat> your center of gravity is in your hips. <coughs> center of gravity is in your hips. One of the best ways to describe your center of gravity, is there anybody that's never seen someone high jump? Yeah. You ever notice what they're trying to get over the crossbar? Hips. It's not their legs or their torso. They're trying to get their hips over the crossbar because that's what'll bring it down. Oh yeah, they may hit with their trailing ankle or something like that, but when they go up and they go over, they're trying to get their hips over the bar. That was something that Dick Fosbury apparently understood better than anybody else because he's the one that decided we ought to do this backwards. Because when they used to do what was called the straddle, if you remember, they would kick up and they had to get their whole torso up and over. So not only were they were elevating their center of gravity, they were elevating their entire body. For as Fosbury understood that I could bend my center of gravity over the bar and clear it better. And the heights, I mean the high jump right now, eight feet. And you guys jump up and get your hips over an eight foot bar. Hmm. Me either. I'd be lucky to get my hips up to the bar. So the center of gravity is, is the focal point of anything. So I'm running in like this, and I decide that point right there. And I'm trying to do this without making you guys glaze over too much. I go in there, and I'm going to stop right there. I can't be here and decide to stop, because where's my center of gravity going to go? Anybody ever had that happen to them? Oh, yeah. Kind of tip over? usually with a little bit of extra substance that maybe you drank along the way. Okay. It's funny what alcohol will do to your center of gravity. Just say it. So what that means, when you move into place and you decide you're going to stop, there's going to have to be a shift where you're going to have to get that braking foot out in front of that center of gravity so that when you stop, the inertia will pull you up into your shooting stance. That's all well and good, wonderful when you got on your best basketball shoes and you're on a nice basketball floor. What do you think this shit's going to be like? You're going to have to take that into account. That's real world. I mean, let's face it, once again, I'm Mr. Murphy. And I'm in a perfectly flat parking lot, brand new asphalt, and I've got to come to a stop. That's where that'll be. <laughs> That's where that'll be. So you're moving into position. You're going to have to stop. Forward inertia bring you up into your shooting position. You certainly don't want to be tipping over. And now you're face down in a gunfight. Advantage who? Yeah, not you. Advantage your opponent. Right. So you guys are going to probably find this hard to believe, but we're going to do this dry first. <laughs> but you got to know what that feels like. You gotta know what it feels like to put it in the right spot. So what you have to do is you have to set it up, 
you have to look at it, you have to see where it is in relation to everything else. And then you can kind of look around and notice it. And I can put it in the holster and I can bring it out. I can find that same spot again and I can run with it. It's not here and it's not there. What if I come over this way? Would that be good? No, then we're probably going to have to go something like this, right? Think about a church security situation or a school building. I once responded to an elementary school fire, a real fire. Kids were running out and it was just like a wall of children. And they latch on to you. They see the uniform, they latch on to you. You're, you're literally peeling them off, telling them to keep going. That's what it would be like in an active shooter situation. Do you think having my muzzle down in a situation like that would work? Yeah, I mean, sometimes muzzle down just can't be. I don't care what they say at some of the schools or some of the big shooting schools. Muzzle down won't always work. So that means here or up here. One of the two, whichever one you want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out right here. Just going to have the gun in my hand. Now, I realize going slow won't be a big problem for some of you. It'll be more going fast. I get that. But all we're going to do, again, guns are empty, no problem. On the command, we're just going to simulate a run for whatever reason you're running in the place. So we go down here. We shift. We're ready to shoot. Okay? Like this. No big deal. If you hit here and you start to go, you know how you correct that? Don't do the splits, guys. Nobody but Gumby can do that. <laughs> Bring your other foot up. Bring your other foot up. Compensate for it. All right, guys. Pay attention to the guy on your left and right. Don't be the jackrabbit. Don't be a turtle. Kind of make sure you're staying on line with them. Adjust accordingly. Let's get good lean backs and breaks. We don't want you doing this. You'll see this line literally. I'm like, I got to stop. Little back. Put the brake on. If I have to, fix it. Here we go. Get in the right spot. Keep that gun visible the whole time. Go. What was that for? In case you were about to tip over. tip over. It's the only reason. If you can get up there, set that brake, and I'm set, go ahead and get your shots off. If I start to go past, this is a stopgap measure to keep you from bowling over. Make sense? Yep. Sir. Here we go. Nope. Guns out, guns out, sun's out. I should see that gun the whole time. If it disappears, I gotta be wondering who's it flagging. Ready? Go! you're doing, you gotta work your way to that target. Go! Drop the last freaking shot. <laughs> Fourteen seventy. So, had I have gotten that last round in, it would have been a clean run. Okay, I'm not all that unhappy with it. 
I'm 67 years old, and I have literally fired two magazines in the last three days. How many have you fired? Oh, a lot. Four and a half. See what I mean? You guys have had a lot more of that practice than I have. So, you ought to be able to at least do what I did. What's this one called again? The 15 and 15. And Thank it would you. be a much more con a much 15 more and 15. argument if I had gotten that last Five shot. shots. <laughs> but I was trying to get that From time. Five yards, 10 yards, 15 trying yards. Trying to get that time. And we will run okay. it in reverse as well. Okay. So five, 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 15 seconds. All hits. But again, that is not a successful one. Drop the last shot. Okay. But you can't see, it can be done. Can be done. Oh, did you try? Oh, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. Boom. Hey, I How missed. Fast? 1440. I missed faster than you, though. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> Your first round fire. Very first round out of six o'clock. Very first round out of the holster. Yeah. Right there below it, see? Yeah. Yeah. I've been shooting a little all day. The rest of them, the rest of them were beautiful. Fantastic, though. What was it? What is it? I can't see it. 1353. Nice job. Nice job, yeah. This was the one right out of the holster. Yeah. Nice job. Okay, you just drop two off to the right. Wait a minute, no, you're in. I'm looking at the wrong line. Clean target, how, how fast? 2181. Oh. Clean target, not enough time. Clean target. Target to me. No, it's down one. Two. I, I keep getting distracted here, too. One, two, two three. three. Down three. That's the time. Are you supposed to be? And I think back at 15, you were shooting down to the left there. Yep. Who do you think you are with that lollipop in your mouth like that? <laughs> <laughs> Life's good. The kids are going to see this. Uh, they probably will. <laughs> What's the thing on the part of it? That right there? This is a piece of microfiber to cover the microphones. Oh, and so it, the wind it actually it? dampens a lot of the wind. Oh, yeah. Can I video you? No pressure. If she makes this under time with a lollipop in her mouth. Yeah, she's rocking a lollipop. This is for your baby, so they know not to mess with mom. Twenty-three was the time. That's what I'm thinking. I, 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 I,
I think you were good. They all look okay. good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> good job. And then your best dirty Harry say, don't mess with mom. Don't mess with mom. <laughs> Existence and kind of a bane to my existence because as I left college, I had a solid understanding of how the human body functions. Physiology, anatomy, biomechanics, all that kind of stuff. So as I, I started in the law enforcement and, and I started getting some of the existing and at that time the thoughts in the training arena, I can remember thinking, well, that didn't make any sense at all. Why would we do that? But you know, you didn't say anything. Anyway, one of the things I came across was moving to the rear. And what we were taught, and I was taught this up until <clears throat> shit into the 2000s, that basically what you did is you drew your pistol and you fought your way to a better position, is what it was called. Give, give me a little cap right here. Because basically what it was is you stood like this and you went pow and you went. Step drag. Or the moonwalk. You had a pretty high tech exactly. called step exactly drag. Exactly it. Great. Okay. No argument with either technique. But what's the problem with it? Slow. Slow. Rounds. You're being shot at. You can't see It's another thing that was fine on the range, gave us something to teach, but it's bullshit when somebody's shooting at you. you got Have shot. you ever been in any kind of an airsoft or even a paintball kind of thing and seen somebody do that? No, they because they get fucking shot. Yeah. So They're like chipmunks on acid in those matches. We did it for a long, long time. And then finally, when I started my training company, I said, not do it anymore. No, bullshit. Uh-uh. The fact of the matter is, folks, understand something. And I'm not trying to get too textbooky on you, but i got to kind of explain this. It is impossible for you to run backwards for any distance. You can't do it. Your center of gravity is not set up for it. If you take a look at how you walk, basically I pick this foot up. What keeps me from tipping over is that I have a forefoot and toes that spread. One of the reasons I happen to like these types of shoes is they give me maximum ability to spread my toes, which many shoes don't. You want a full toe box yep. in whatever kind of shoes you wear. But basically as I go forward, that forward foot, the spread of those toes, allows me to crash land with the other foot. And then I do it, and I do it, and I do it, and I do it. We have a rhythm. But it's the forefoot and the toes, the way the knees bend and the ankles rotate, that allow me to do that. Does everybody see that? Show me how I do that this way. day long, slowly and carefully. You can't run back. I didn't make that up. I've had several trauma surgeons tell me that. Too much stuff damaged. The, the rate of infection because it goes through your fecal matter and urine and all that carries it up into your vital organs. There's just a really good chance you're going to die. And that's if, if you're close to a trauma center. There's no blood stopper, there's no tourniquets, there's none of the new high speed stuff that's kind of, you know, in vogue right now, which I have no problem with, that's going to stop that round, it's, that's going to help you. So you don't want to end up on your back taking rounds up through your rectum, you just don't. But I still see to this day people continuing to teach you trying to move backwards at a methodical pace as if you're covering yourself with bullets. Sounds like a good theory, right? I can keep this guy down with my outgoing round. But what about that motherfucker over there? That's a 
okay. <laughs> Ain't happening. Ain't happening. So that's why it happens in two stages. At this point, you have to decide is staying on target more important to you than moving quickly? Because I get it all the time, especially from the youngsters. I'll never turn my back on a threat. No problem. It, it is the better way to watch yourself die. <clears throat> Look at it. My gun's like this and I'm still facing my threat. I can watch myself die. Or I can get the fuck out of Dodge. What difference does it make if I turn and try to get out of there quickly? If I take a round in the back or a round in the face? Some of the proclamations I hear are so fucking stupid. And they always come from people who have never even had a paper cut. But they look good in a fucking YouTube video. And they're not here. And they'll never be in one of my classes. No, they won't. They'll never be in anybody's even class. If I, if even I fought for another five years, you'd never see those guys in my classes because you know why? Because you'd make, I'd fun, make of fun of them. <laughs> Your feelings got hurt. I'd, I'd make fun of them. And I don't really care. They have a million followers. But don't give a shit. Guys, there's an old guy retired. He was the range master of Cincinnati PD. He's been retired since the 80s. Dave knows him. His name's Jack Basham. Jack Basham. He always used to tell us, and I went through firearms instructor schools with him in the late 90s, early 2000s, and when we were doing a lot of movement shoot stuff, he always used to say, the best place to be in any kind of trouble is not there. And he said, standing there with an empty gun uh, or trying to run backwards, that's trouble. And so not being there is best idea, and I'd much rather be moving in a natural fashion versus unless I'm a bird, my feet aren't on backwards, I can't do it. So. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be doing the two phases of moving to the rear. The disengagement and the turn and move. Okay? You may do them in one flowing move, but by the same token, you may disengage and move laterally, but we haven't done the lateral stuff yet. Okay? When we get to the lateral movement, which will probably be tomorrow now, then we'll chunk together disengagement and lateral movement. But today, we're trying to keep everything to the rear. Because linear-wise, it's easier to teach a large group of people. See what I'm talking about? So, the disengagement stuff's pretty easy. A lot of times, we'll start right up next to the target, but I don't want you guys falling down the hill. So we'll just start it right from here. Now, if we're doing, if we're going to create distance, three or four steps, what does it make sense to chunk that together with? Really? This whole fucking group, nobody can come up with something that would be good to do that as you move back out of the way? I would draw it. There you go. Who said that first? Because it wasn't me. Yeah. If we're standing right here and we're trying to create distance, doesn't that make us make sense? What a great idea. What a great idea. So that's what we're going to chunk it together with. We're going to chunk together with, you know, the, the three or four steps with the draw stroke. Now, remember when I said to you that you move until you're ready to get accurate outbound fire. So, knowing that every step you take to the rear increases your chances of falling, when do you think would be a good time to stop? Once you come up and you've got when you got the gun on target. Yeah. yeah. So a fast draw would be nice to have here, but it doesn't need to be one second. Because you want to get distance. Yeah. Well, you're getting the distance you draw. So the disengagement would look something. I've got an empty gun, so don't worry about your eyes. You're standing here like this. Hey, buddy, let's not do this. And you decide that's something to trip over. And you decide, hey. Let's not do this. Let's not. No! It was probably only two, two and a half, three steps maybe. But the gun was out, sights were on target, and I was ready to depress the trigger. Now, does it matter that this guy maybe went a little bit further? Not really. 
I just don't want him there playing this game. So how do you think we're going to do this the first couple times? Try. Uh, you guys get me. Uh, we'll get the folks who are not quite used to that. All right, they've bro they've broken away. They've gotten their shots. They are not used to the concept of having that muzzle going that way. So they'll turn themselves. They'll look. They'll turn. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. Swear, <laughs> swear to God. Yep, it's a I've seen. Fucking gun. <laughs> swear to God. So um, doing that, right? We've we've already done this. We've worked back. We've fired our shots. We're, we know how to do this already. We're looking, we're stepping in the direction that we're headed. Back we go. I don't want to see this. And, and hey, hang on. It. You do that, and you run back this way, and there's your next threat. Yeah. <laughs> Grinning at you. Because <laughs> in the real world, there is no downrange. That's right. There is no downrange. Come here, Dave. On this drill, we are about to break the internet. So, here he is. Directed at him, not at me. <laughs> the comments the are going to come. The comments that are going to come from this drill. Okay. Like Don't it. come to my class. Don't learn how to gunfight. Continue to be a, a, a range Nazi dipshit. <laughs> Would you say get off my lawn, please? Get off my lawn. <laughs> Covers it. Right. Okay. It's gunfight. It's 360 degree environment. Yep. We've got square range rules, but there's nothing says that we can't prepare the best we can. That's why we start out with this stuff dry fire. And then once we prep you, we get you ready. We go live fire after you're ready. Okay? But you know what the best arena for this stuff is? The, the interactive arena. Because with Sims and Airsoft, you can go in any direction you want. But you've always got to do the interactive training in conjunction with the live fire training or we're not really preparing you. And if it breaks the internet by the time this shows up, I won't be in the training business anymore, so who gives a fuck? Three sessions gonna hit. He'll be back in a year. <laughs> <laughs> run, Darren, run. You've been saving that one all. You know what? <laughs> The way the stock market's going, never say never. <laughs> Not unless you're short. Yeah. Well, that's what got you back into it years ago, right? Obamacare. Once told yeah. that you should, right? Couple more calls. Watch him. Ready? Don't want any trouble. Don't want any trouble. Talk to him. Come on. Maintain your position. Move. 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 So you you take responsibility the minute you drew your gun, you took responsibility for everybody. <clears throat> yep. He's only after you, but you you gotta worry about him and everyone else. So what we'll do is we'll start. Engaged. And it's always interesting to us that after a few repetitions, everybody moves and draws almost identical. <laughs> always been that way. Doesn't matter if you're old, you're young, you're tall, you're short. After a few draws, a few practice reps, people back up and they stop, they're on target. You can almost draw a straight line with it. Not a bad thing, right? So, boom, maybe he's down, maybe you've decided to move, maybe there's too many of them, I don't know what the case is. The first thing you gotta do is you gotta look to see where you're going. Or I guarantee you'll turn around and pull, give me my sound effect. Is that the pull? Sound oh, effect. There we go, ready? Ready? <laughs> okay, <laughs> guarantee it. That's the pull sound effect. <laughs> guarantee it, okay. So. Just real quick, look, make sure the path is clear, go. In this particular case, you see the line with the cones? You guys may want to move, because you're where I'm going, okay? Turn, move, go. Make the turn, engage the target, okay? 
You guys are going to find it hard to believe that we're going to do this dry first. What? Shazam! So, why? Because this drill is also an awareness exercise. It's also an awareness exercise. I turn. I just can't launch my bullets right. I've got to be concerned about my battle space. Well, in this particular case, it's your classmates. When you turn, you've got to check and make sure all of your classmates are back behind the firing line before you engage. So it makes you look. That's also why we do it dry first. Okay? Get everybody on the same sheet of music, then we'll do it. We'll do it live fire. Then what we'll do is we'll do some reps where you disengage live fire, turn, look, run back here, live fire. This may be one of the few times that you guys will ever get to run up range with a loaded gun in your hand. So revel in it. Yeah, most places you send them in a code brown if you do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have. I only want my team. When, when I used to do the check 360, I was telling you guys last night, they met me, a the number of them met me and said, if you do that here, you're gone. So you can do anything you want like that, though, in the interactive arena. And that's some of the stuff we never think about. We always think about scenario-based stuff. <clears throat> we never think about the things we can do in the, inter in the interactive arena that you can't do on the square range that are just really some essential level skills that never get to be practiced. Like turning all the way around and doing stuff like that. Nerf guns with your kid. Huh? Nerf guns with your kid. But they're devious, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I told you guys our first Red handled gun training was revolvers and cotton wad bullets. Yeah, yeah. Goes way back. We've always understood that we need to interact with each other. Just always stuff that gets in the way of it. Safety, hard feelings, I'm going to look bad, shit like that. Sometimes death. All right, go ahead and get those guns out. Up on target. I'll simulate and call it for you. All right. Bam, bam, bam. Now. You're gonna have to divert that muzzle. You're moving, looking, look first. Step in the direction you're looking. Come Just on back. Pivot. Just a pivot. You already did these pivots. Come on back. Check, make sure battle space is clear. You decided to draw your gun. It's not just you and him. It's you, everybody around him. Not fair, but that's the way it is. Keep in mind. They're looking, there's people out there looking for you to screw this up. So they can say, if that crazy gun hunter with the gun wouldn't have got involved, it would have been okay. They'll never say a word if you stop the threat. We see that all the time. But by God, if you screw up, no matter how hard you were trying, that's what they're looking for. Keep that in mind. Everybody holster up. All right, end up in the spot where you were after your separation. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. Get out of there. Turn, look, watch those muscles. Come on back. Check the battle space. Don't find Abner. Yeah, Abner's filming, so he doesn't count. Bam, bam, bam. Back in the holster. Okay, bam, bam, bam. You've already shot him. Go ahead, up on target. Calling you out in that position, looking for a place to go. Bam, 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 you shot him. Get out of there, get out of there. Up jump muzzles, come on back, check your lanes, check your lanes, hit him. That's my gloves. My yeah. gloves keep catching it. Did you I do had okay? a malfunction. You cleared it and induced another malfunction. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, I was watching yeah. you do it. Clean it up, me. Clean up those.
Only fire four? Yes, oh, right. yes. Right. Five, yeah. oh well, I took the six at the hardest position. <laughs> Bravo. Sixteen seventy-four. Okay. And I dropped my last round. See if I'd have fired that when I post to it wouldn't happen. Person that'll win the gunfight. It's not the fastest splits, the quickest draw, and all that. It's the one that recognizes what the situation truly is first and acts upon Tough to do. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Monkey pops up pretty soon before November, so they could do that mail. Yep. All right, 20.7.